All right guys, welcome back to another one of my videos. And today we're here to talk about my new PC build that I just built. So I'm really excited to talk about this, uh, this video and, and talk to you guys about this computer because uh, I told you guys, I, I did a video in the beginning of the year saying some goals that I had in mind that I wanted to complete this year. And one of those goals was to build a brand new PC. So for all you guys who wanna know, usually the rule I follow is I usually upgrade my graphics cards uh, it kind of depends on how much better the graphics cards are. I usually don't upgrade every year. Usually it's every two years. So uh, especially with this one with a 4090, I'll probably upgrade every two years. Uh, and then when I hit the six year mark, that's usually when the CPU kind of starts you know, hitting bottlenecks with your GPU. Like for example, I had the uh, 4080, which I did sell off now because I ended up getting a 4090 now with this build. But uh, I got a 4080 originally with my Origin PC that you guys may have seen on this channel that I built six years ago with an 8700K, and it was definitely holding it back a bit, like maybe 10 or 15%. Uh, it was holding it back a little bit. It was showing its age and stuff like that, and Microsoft Simulator and stuff that I played were, wasn't getting the FPS that you know you could get if you had a build like this with the same exact GPU. So it was definitely about that time to upgrade, and that's usually what I do. In the six-year mark, I, I completely you know, get rid of my build and kind of start fresh. That's usually how long I keep my builds for and then upgrade the graphics cards every one to two years, depending on what my mood is during that year. Um, so it was that time, and you can see here, I went and built my own PC this time. So last time, if you guys were following this channel, I had an Origin PC. I did a full video on that, and overall, I was really impressed with the Origin PC build. The only thing that annoyed me is a couple of years into it, uh, for whatever reason, there was a lot of noise coming from the top fans. The PC was very loud. You guys may have even noticed that in some of my videos that I did right next to my computer, which was really annoying. Uh, never cared to like take the whole thing apart to figure out what that noise was, but it still happened on its own. Uh, so that was the only negative experience I had with that whole thing, but otherwise the Origin PC was built really well. Never had any issues. The CPU was water cooled and everything. The first time in a while that I had a uh, water cooled PC, I had to fill it only. I only filled the water twice the whole entire six years. That's how long that thing lasted. Uh, granted, I don't leave my computer on 24 hours a day or anything, but I only filled it twice uh, with that reservoir tank. But this time I was like, you know what? I need to go back and do these PC builds myself. This is going to be a lot cheaper, uh, especially if I want to spend my money towards a 4090 and stuff. If I wanted to get a PC build like this with these specs, from a you know from origin or something uh you know it would cost you know o over five thousand easily where if i built this myself it would obviously be a lot less than that so it was definitely a, a, a worthy time to go ahead and start building my new pc and i want to show you guys around on what i did with this pc and also show you guys some benchmarks that i'm getting at all that kind of stuff and and talk about the case and everything uh, that you guys are seeing here so let's go ahead and get into the video gaming tech eating brekkie is the gaming tech all right guys so here is my pc build we're going to go ahead and talk about this build a little bit and uh, show you guys what's in here and what we have going on so right here you can see of course right here prominently is the actual case so this is a height y60 case it's a really popular case people like it a lot because it obviously has the fish tank look so while i'm sitting at my desk here uh you know Right here, you can see if I look over to the left, it's a perfect case because it kind of I can see everything from every angle, which is awesome. Uh, I love like the fish tank bowl look or whatever you want to call it, glass on every single side so you can see everything. I think it looks fantastic, and I love the case itself. Uh, you know, using it and everything like that. So that's the first thing. Um, besides the case here, we prominently have my graphics card right here. This is, as you can tell, the Gigabyte Aero 4090. So 4090 is crazy, as you guys will see in some of these benchmarks that we'll show off here in a minute. Um, so those have been fantastic. And then we have seven fans in this case. Uh, we have a the radiator up there, as you can see, and the radiator up there. Uh, and all these lights can be changed, even though I have them all white. You can do you know whatever color you want, uh, rotating through colors, all that kind of stuff. But uh, these fans here, and then the CPU cooler here that we have is the NZXT cooler. Um, and you can see here the LCD that it comes with is awesome. You can put whatever you want on there. Of course, I prominently have my logo. I think that makes the most sense, and it's a was really really cool uh it's uh, if you guys remember my origin pc what i did instead is i had the your gaming techie you know right here at the corner that was kind of etched into the glass this is obviously much better the fact that you know everything's in color and it looks really really good on that screen i'm not gonna lie i don't know if it's coming across in the video but it's really sharp looking and really cool definitely gives me you know that that cool feel of the case and people when they come over can say hey that's his youtube case right there which is pretty cool um and then we have the fans right here uh we got a fan right here we got two fans there in the back and then uh 
two more fans here at the bottom. So these two fans came with the PC. They're not replaced. There was a fan here that I did replace that was an LED, uh, and that's it. They didn't come with any other fan, so I added the rest of them myself. Uh, the only thing I would do that I kind of messed up a little bit on, or not messed up, but I wish I would have done differently, is this is a 120 millimeter fan, which is fine because that's what fits there. It doesn't fit anything else. But I got a package of three, so I would just put the the other two over here, but this does support 140 millimeter fans, which would have been better. Bigger, obviously, it would drag in more more uh, air and stuff like that and airflow. But since I already got the kit, you know, I, I stuck the 120 millimeters on there. But you could add 140 over here, which would be better. And the way that I have them set up, if you guys are paying attention uh, with the height Y60 case here, is I have these two over here as exhaust. So this is taking the air inside the case and exhausting it out. So if I put my hand over here, it's exhausting the hot air from out of here. That would be this one. And then these three at the top, they're exhausting the air out. And then these over here in the corner, these are intakes. So these are, you know, bringing air in, cool air in from the outside and bring them in there and then intake at the bottom here. So intake, two fans here, two fans there for intake, three radiator fans up there for exhaust and then the exhaust fan over here for a total of seven fans. So really, really awesome. Um, uh, obviously, I love, uh, you know, the fans on here and it's been doing pretty well you can see here at you know with no load or anything like that with just the pc on as you can see and we'll talk about the screen in a minute but you can see motherboard is currently 36 degrees or so and the graphics card is currently 37 degrees as you can see there um so really good temperatures in my opinion uh the case is also really silent uh i love it it's it's really quiet and easy to do so let's talk about cable management here. Like I said, I think I did a pretty good job with cable management, about 90 to 95% of the way there. It is not perfect. Uh, I hate cable management. It's not something, uh, it's always something I strive to do better every time. And I think this is definitely the best case I've done with cable management, but it's still not perfect. I got this white you know, cord from the fan going across there that I could have hid behind the motherboard or something and then went around the corner, but it was too late because the mother was already in place. Uh, but that's something I can try and do later on. And then I wish I cleaned up a little bit of the, you know, motherboard pins that are sitting up there that are really close to the fans up there uh, that I would have done a little bit better before I put the fans in. But uh, that's something I can change a little bit later. But it's overall not that bad. Uh, it's actually really good. It's definitely my favorite case because when you're looking at it, the only thing you really see is that one singular cable going across that I may, you know, eventually fix because that's the one that's going to drive me more crazy than the rest. But everything else when you're kind of looking at it is great because the cables are black so they kind of blend into the motherboard in the back. And then this is obviously everything in white kind of stands out uh, with, with the CPU cooler here, the white fans, the GPU and stuff like that. Everything else, I think, in my opinion, came out really good as far as the cable management. And it's like I said, it's definitely the best cable management I've done. Uh, and I love the way the case looks, and I love when people come up to it, they can kind of see that. The only one that I'm going to change and eventually, you know, fix when I decide to open the backside again is, uh, you know, that singular cable going up there in white. Maybe wrap it around the back there and then come back out would be the easiest way to do that. So it's not going across the the motherboard like it is right now but at least it's white right now and it kind of fits the white aesthetic as opposed to being like you know a random color cable going across but overall really really happy with it uh, i do got a 1300 uh, 13900k processor that's what it's being used in there i got 64 gigs of g skill memory at 6400 uh, ddr5 of course um i got a bunch of hard drives here and uh, i do have the um gen 4 four terabytes for the main PC with the main OS. Things are fast as hell on that thing. Downloading games at full speed on Steam at one, you know, I have a one gig up and down and seeing it download at full speed because the SSD can actually keep up and have those write speeds is fantastic because obviously your Steam can't download. Steam's not going to be able to download as fast as you want the games to download if the, if the SSD you have or the hard drive you have can't keep up with writing that much data at the same time. So having a Gen 4 SSD that can actually keep up with that and seeing it download at a one gig, uh, you know, at one one gig up and one gig down is just insane uh, when I see those speeds on Steam. So that's fantastic. And then I have a couple of other SSDs in there as well. I have two two terabytes. Uh, so the way that you can actually put the SSDs in there, uh, just so you guys know, so there is a bunch of different. I think there's. I don't remember exactly how much the motherboard has in slots, but I have two connected right now that are hiding behind the graphics card for, um, you know, the SSDs in there, uh, the M2s. And then I also have, so there's two slots sitting in the back here where you can add hard drives and it can take two S, there's two slots and those two slots back there uh, are on the back side of the motherboard so you can't see them from this side, but those two slots basically let you um, add two SSDs or one 3.5. 
hard drives. So you can have four hard drives sitting, uh, four SSDs sitting in the back over there, the 2.5 or two 3.5 hard drives in there. I have two SSDs right now and one big hard drive with most of my data. So I have a lot of hard drives on this computer uh, with a lot of space. Like I said, I have a four terabyte SSD, the main one, and then two, two, two terabyte SSDs in there. Um, and then also another one on there as well uh, for the main, for just a bunch of data, that's four terabytes as well. So a lot of space on here, over 10 terabytes worth of data, you know, sitting on here. Uh, the motherboard that I'm using is an Asus motherboard. Um, so it, the Asus motherboard is fantastic. As you can see here, it is the, uh, the hero edition of this motherboard, which is awesome. Uh, Asus Rogue. Um, that's the motherboard that I've used in a lot of my builds. I've, I've used Asus for a long time and I usually get the hero edition for these motherboards and that's exactly what I got on here. Uh, obviously the black look, I think it looks great. I love the black and white kind of mixed together and stuff like that. So I think that came out really, really good. And then of course, if we move on to here, one of the things that people love about the Height Y60 case is of course the screen right here in front of it. And as you can see here on the screen in front of it, it looks awesome. Uh, I got the mod uh, for the screen. It looks awesome on here. I am using the I, uh, Ada 64 Extreme product uh, with this theme that I found online that somebody created, which is awesome. Uh, the Don't mind the time because that thing moved on me. I can actually fix it while we're sitting here because it's really easy to fix. You just go ahead and drag. Uh, but you can uh, you know put customize this to whatever you want. This is how I have it customized uh, because this is how the guy set it up and I like it. But you can get other themes and do a bunch of things and customize it as much as you want. You got the time up here. I got the you know Intel i9 13900K uh, that I talked about. You can see the temperature there at all times. Uh, the graphics card. You can see the temperature on there. You can see how much RAM you is being used right now at a glance, and you know all that kind of stuff with DDR5. Uh, you can also see your download speed, and then more importantly, frames per second. Uh, the frames per second. The way that that works is it actually uses um, a piece of software called the Riva Tuner. Um, statistics that's the version that's on there and it works really well sometimes some of the games I have to put at windows full screen instead of full screen sometimes the FPS counter doesn't work if it's at full screen uh, you have to do window full screen the only game I've come across that it hasn't worked with uh, is just FIFA 2023 every other game that I've tested does show the FPS on there and it's awesome to see it at a glance without running anything else uh, which is awesome and yeah I love the way this thing looks I love the color that it adds because of everything being colored there Love the way that I can see all this information at a glance. But this is just a screen, guys. It's a screen. So I, I can move this out of the way uh, if I want to and then put something else on the screen. It'd be awesome to, you know, use this uh, anytime I want and, you know, kind of do whatever I want with it. I could put a video on there if I'm streaming on YouTube or something like that. I could put the chat sitting right here. You know, obviously, it's just a regular, you know, screen that you connect. So you can do whatever you want with it, which is awesome. But this is what it's used primarily most of the time. But I can throw anything up there that I want when I'm doing, you know, Twitch streams or, or VR streams or whatever the case may be. So really, really awesome. I love that this is added to the PC. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why I got this case is because I love having the, having a screen like this built into the case that looks like it was built into the case. And it's just fantastic. And as you can see, the case here on the bottom, I got a stream deck sitting right here, but you can see the case at the bottom has a couple of slots here. There's the power button, two USBs, and then a USB-C uh, that you have right there. And then it's a really clean look at the top, as you guys can see here. You got this cover right here, um, and everything just looks really good in my opinion uh, with my PC setup here. I'm using an LG C2 uh, 42 inch that I'd done a full review on on why I like that so much. Uh, but yeah, it looks fantastic. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, and that's kind of an overview of exactly what's going on in the system. So, uh, and here on the right, before we, before we move on, here on the right, I don't know what to put in here. Maybe you guys have better ideas than I do. Go ahead and shout it out if you do. I do have a um, you know a little pop sitting right there right now. I don't know what else to add in there. Maybe a pop that's better designed. I want a taller one or something like that, or a taller figure. Uh, next to the fans, a lot of people put like figures in their in their PC cases and stuff. Let me know what you guys think I should put in there uh, right now. Um, Clyde's what's it? Right now it's just that in there. Um, so anyway. That is an overview of the PC, so let's go ahead and run some games here and give you guys a little bit of a you know, showcase of what this thing can do so you guys can see the games running on here. All right, guys, so we're going to start off really quickly with Disney Speedstorm just so you guys can get an idea 
of, uh, you know, how these games are. We're going to run these games raw right from Steam, so you're going to see everything uh, with some of the games I run. And then if you look to the left here with the frames per second, hopefully you can see that that is a zero. And uh, you'll see the frames per second sitting over there while we play these games. And also, I wanted to show you that some of these games load. Not every game takes advantage of that uh, Gen 4 SSD where games load as fast as, like, the PS5 or Xbox Series X or anything. But some of the games are super, super fast. Like, ridiculously fast. Like, watch this. I'm going to hit Disney Speedstorm here. And, and we're going to play this. Let me lower the volume a little bit because uh, it might be a little bit too loud. Um, but if I hit play here... This game uh, launches as fast as you just saw it. The only reason, the only reason that the game isn't faster as is, is because of the fact that uh, you know you have to sit at that logo while it connects to the servers. Because if not, you'd be ready to go. But see how fast you got in there. I mean, that's that's awesome stuff. Um, so here is uh, Disney Speed Storm. I love this game. It's obviously Mario Kart with Disney characters and Disney uh, themes and everything. You can see the graphics here. I'm running it at Ultra. Obviously, this isn't the most demanding game in any way, but it still looks really pretty, in my opinion, in 4K. Everything is high, as you can see here. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and play a few seconds of a race. Uh, might as well um, do one of these so you guys can see it. Um, we'll just do this one here. And for those of you guys who have not played this game yet, I think it's a lot of fun, in my opinion. I've never felt much incentive to fight fair. Uh, can't do that because he's not start up. So I'm probably going to lose this race anyway because he's not high enough rank. Everybody warmed up or should I, I do my looking at? Raise my eyes you will always remember this is the day that Captain Jack Sparrow won a thing. And a lot of these games, I have it set to not go above 120 frames per second. So, uh, which is not, because that's how much my monitor supports. So this game would probably run even higher than 120 frames per second. You can see it's locked at 119 over there, as you guys are looking at. And uh, the game just looks really pretty. I understand that this is obviously not the most demanding game out there, but it still doesn't matter. Um, oh, damn, I got rocked. Still doesn't really matter if everything looks, you know, really pretty to the eye. And I think this game looks fantastic and is a lot of fun if you guys have not tried this and you're Disney fans and Mario Kart or karting fans. Uh, let's do Call of Duty Modern Warfare uh, just to show you guys how, how that game runs. Same exact thing as before. Everything is maxed out here. Uh, you can see uh, it's a 4090 sitting on here uh, that I have going on. And then you can see, you know, everything is maxed out on high. As you can see there, and whatever can be on Ultra is obviously on Ultra, because uh, some of the settings go to Ultra and some of the settings go to High for some reason. Um, but you can see everything is at max quality and everything is at Ultra, as you can see here. So here we are with Call of Duty here. As you can look at the left-hand side over there, we're getting about 114 frames per second. Again, this is everything maxed out 4K, as you guys saw. And everything is maxed out, HDR on, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we got somebody with a bad mic, apparently. I'm already getting killed. I forgot this is free-for-all, not team deathmatch. Someone needs to learn how to turn their mic off. Blunted. Um, that was just terrible aim. Um, I should have died there. that guy in a second but we're not going to be playing that long anyway i just want to show you guys uh, you know what the frames per second is that you're getting as you can tell um and i'm obviously playing terrible because usually people play terrible when they're behind a video screen that's the excuse i'm going to use of course i'm looking the other the way when the other guy's going you guys are going to think i'm terrible at call of duty but i'm actually not that bad but i usually play team deathmatch not a. Uh, not free for all. Like Team Deathmatch a little bit more. Saw him from the corner of my eye there.
That guy obviously ran. My God, I probably thought. Oh my God, I can't believe I killed them both. I'm kind of stuck in a corner right now. Oh, let's go. Now we're catching some fire. And then I died. Still, we got we did good. We did good. Let's see if this is a good spot. I'm probably gonna get wrecked or I'm standing here, but that's fine. Watch me end up hitting nobody. Alright, we got one at least. See if we get a few people killed. This guy's still over there talking with his mic. I really hit nobody with those airstrikes. That guy literally just walked by me and didn't see me. But yeah, you guys get the idea. I think we showed off our skills pretty well now. Prove to you guys that I'm not terrible at Call of Duty like it may have first seemed. Oh, this guy was just laying there. Elden Ring here. We'll show you guys how that game looks like here just for a couple of minutes here. Just to show you guys what the frames per second look like in the area that I'm in currently. Which is in the very beginning because I just started playing this game. So you can see how fast we got into a game here. You can see the, the frames per second are currently reading at zero. And that is probably because of the display settings that I told you guys about. Uh, so let's see if that's the case here. Yeah, so it's at full screen, so you got to do borderless windowed for some of these games. And there you go, there's the FPS counter. But then you can't use HDR, so usually for, for if a game has that and it has HDR on top of it, then I usually don't do borderless window because then you can't do HDR. Um, but then I won't see the frames per second over there in the corner. But for right now, we're going to do HDR all just to show you guys the frames per second there in the corner. But you can see everything is currently set to maximum. You can see everything here is maxed out um, with Elden uh, Ring here. And this is the game that probably has the lowest FPS out of any game when you do everything maxed out. Uh, especially in the area that I'm in, as you can see. Uh, but um, this game is obviously highly demanding. I remember playing this game at like, if I'm, I couldn't even max everything out on my, uh, on my old build when I had the 3080 before and stuff like that. Uh, but you can see, it looks really good. I'm also terrible at this game. But I think 60 FPS is perfectly fine or, or getting close to it, which is what I've said before. So I have no problem uh, with a game like this running at, you know, in the 50s. Um, I'd rather have the, the higher quality graphics, you know, that's what I come for the PC for in my opinion, than the higher frames. So, for a game like this, I think it's good. And we'll leave it off with this one. There's obviously a bunch of other games I can go through, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea of, you know, how my PC build is running. You guys have been seeing, you know, the temperatures on the left hand side there and the frames per second in a couple of these games. I uh, just wanted to show you guys what a build like this can kind of get you. Uh, I've talked about it before. You know, a lot of the games run at high frame rates, and I'm really excited to get a uh, big screen beyond. That's my next VR headset that I'm getting. I sold off my HTC Vive Pro 2, and uh, I'll be getting the uh, big screen beyond. I'm waiting for that face scan email that we're all waiting for, uh, or not all of us, because some lucky people have already gotten theirs, but I'm waiting for that, and I'm excited for that, and that will definitely be a great video when I do that and seeing how the system handles PC VR on a you know headset like the big screen beyond. Uh, where you're getting that, uh, you know, 2.5, uh, 2.5 resolution screen. So I'm excited to dive into that headset with the specs on my PC, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, this game I also have played already, and you guys will, will see. Um, 
you know, this game runs at 120 frames per second. It is wild that a game that looks this good is running at 120 frames per second because I still think Red Dead is easily in this top five of most impressive PC VR, or sorry, PC games to show off graphics-wise. I think it looks amazing. Um, there are a couple of other games that are also on that same wavelength, like Hogwarts Legacy, I think looks fantastic. So as you can see here, if I go into the Red Dead Redemption settings and I go into display, you can see that we have everything to, or actually there's nothing in here to turn on. I'm in the wrong area. Uh, graphics here, you can see everything is turned on to 4K, 120 frames per second refresh rate. We got all of that turned on. We got quality preset. All custom because I put everything to ultra as you guys are looking at here with no NVIDIA DLSS so this is running native 4k right now with HDR on and everything turned on as you guys can see here and this is native 4k uh, that it's getting um, as you can see and it's getting about 64 frames per second this obviously varies depending on the area that you're in uh, but again 65 frames per second runs smooth as hell especially for a game like this this is not like a, you know, a crazy FPS game or anything like that. This is a story-based game. Uh, so running at native six, uh, frames per second is amazing. And then, of course, with the NVIDIA technology that you have here where you can run NVIDIA DLSS 3.0 uh, now, uh, if, if for the games that support it, if you don't want to run, if you want to run at a higher FPS and still keep the a very similar quality with everything maxed out and everything, then obviously you have that option to... Um, where did I just see it before that I now went right over it? Uh, NVIDIA DLSS, you can turn that on. And I always set mine to quality first, uh, just because I want to see what that looks like and kind of leave everything else as is. Uh, unfortunately, this game does not support because on the frames per second it would be even higher, but it doesn't support the, uh, the 3.0 technology. I, I forget the exact name now, but it doesn't have the other DLSS technology, uh, the frame, the frame generation. That's what I was thinking of. It doesn't have frame generation, which increases your FPS even more. But if I leave this just like this right now, you can see Avenida DLSS is now sitting at quality. And now look at that FPS. And the game still looks, I mean, it's hard to even tell uh, most of the time the difference, unless if you really start looking into finer detail. But you can see now it's getting 100 FPS uh, in the same area here as we're walking around with using NVIDIA DLSS technology. And this isn't even the frame regeneration that supports, you know, the, the latest graphics cards because this game doesn't have that because it was made before all that stuff came out. But this has DLSS 2.0, I believe. But regardless, it looks outstanding. and You can get those higher frames if you want. But for me, if a game like this that's not a heavy FPS shooter is getting, you know, in the 60s like it was before, I'd rather just keep it at native. But, you know, people have their preferences. Um, but both options are here. Uh, for a game like this, but the fact that we can run Red Dead, everything maxed out over f at 4K native, or DLSS where everything is looking still amazing uh, to the naked eye, and running at these crazy high frame rates is just outstanding. This game is not that old, uh, you know, and didn't expect to be running this game this good, but this game looks fantastic, and I love playing through this game. So guys, uh, that's it. That's all the games I wanted to show off here uh, so you guys can take a look at a little bit of how the games run. There's a lot more games I could be you know, showing you guys, but we'll be here all day. But uh, that gives you guys a glimpse into you know, how that works and how the, right pa the left panel there is being used and stuff like that. Um, so let's go ahead and move into my final thoughts. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that video on the or on the uh, on my pre-built that I made here. Uh, in my opinion, this is my favorite build I've ever done. So I have built other computers before, even though I had the Origin PC last year that I talked or last time that I talked about. But I have built my own PCs in the past. Um, this is probably my fifth PC that I've built over you know the last twenty year span or whatever the case may be for myself. So. Really, really cool uh, PC. I think it's my favorite build I've ever done. Uh, like I talked about, even though it's not 100% perfect, maybe 90 to 95% as far as the cable management. I usually struggle with that sometimes. Uh, I think this is my cleanest build I've done so far. I love the white aesthetic uh, that it has. I love my logo being prominent, slitting right there. I love the screen here on the side so I can see everything at a glance. Um, you know, like I said, I think it came out really, really good, and I'm loving this case. Uh, the case is fantastic. I'm having a lot of fun with it, and, uh, you know, everything looks great. And as you can see with the games that you guys saw, a 4090 paired with a 1300, uh, uh, 13900K is, uh, is definitely not going to be any slouch, and it's 
you know, amazing to see games running, a lot of these games running at over 100 FPS uh, with my monitor there, which can go up to 100, or not my monitor, it's a TV technically, but it can do 120 frames per second either way. And um, yeah, it, it, it's fantastic to play games at, you know, high FPS. I, I still, as a person who plays PC games, I know some of you guys think I'm crazy, I still prefer to play games at higher quality settings uh, at 60 FPS than I would at playing those same games at lower quality settings at 120 frames per second. But right now, since I got a 4090, a lot of these games that I showed you are obviously are running at max resolution at 4K, max settings, and still getting you know anywhere from 80 to 120 frames per second. So fantastic, fantastic stuff. Um, excited to have this build. Excited that I was able to complete one of my goals this year um, You know, with uh, getting a new PC built. Uh, I'm really excited about that. So, um, yeah, it's fantastic. Guys, if you guys have any questions about anything about this PC build or anything you guys may be considering on your own builds, make sure you leave those questions down below, guys. If not, thank you guys for watching. Till next time.